were told to subtract 312 minus 189, or subtract 189 from 312. Well, just like in the first example, you want to write it, we want to write the two numbers really on top of each other. And we'll see why this is useful in a second. So you want to have the corresponding places above and below each other. So we have 312 minus 189. The 2 is in the 1's place, the 9 is in the 1's place. That's why they're both above and below each other. The 1 and the 8 are both in the 10's place. The 3 and the 1 are both in the 100's place. And I'll show you in a second why this is so important. But the first, I just want to show you how I would go about solving this problem. Then I'll show you why this actually works. So when we go to the 1's place right over here, we want to subtract 9 from 2. You want to subtract 9 from 2. Not so clear that you can subtract 9 from 2. There are alternate ways of doing this where you actually could do that, but we won't do those just yet. So how can you subtract 9 from 2? Well, what if you could take, if you could add to this 2 from something in one of the higher places? So what if you were to go to this tens place right over here? What if you were going to go to this tens place over here? This 1 in the tens place actually represents the number 10. So what if you were to take that 10? and take it out of the tens place, so this becomes a 0 now, and then add that 10 to the 2. Well, if you add that 10 to the 2, you will get a 12 right over here. And so what it looks like what you're doing, and you'll sometimes hear this terminology, it looks like you borrowed a 1, and you just literally stuck that 1 onto the left of that 2. But what you're really doing is you took this 1, which represents 10, because it's in the tens place, and you're regrouping it. You're putting it in the ones place, or you're adding it to this 2. You're grouping it with the 2. I guess you could think of it that way. So now instead of writing 1 tens and 2 ones, you're writing 0 tens and 12 ones. Same exact thing. You have not changed the value. And what's good about this is now you can subtract the 9 from the 12. And we can do that. And there's a couple of ways you can think about it. You can just worry about one place at a time. So you can worry about the 1's place and say, OK, we're ready to subtract. Then worry about the 10's place and say, OK, then we're ready to subtract. Or you can just make sure that everything in the numerator is greater than everything in the denominator before you subtract. So either, way, either of those ways will work. But let's just progress with this. So we have 12 minus 9 is equal to 3. Then we go to the 10's place. It was bad enough when it was 1 minus 8. We wouldn't have been able to pull that off. And then we made it even worse because we took that 1 out of the tens place. So we have 0 minus 8 in the tens place. And so that won't work, but we can do the same idea. This 3 right over here is 300. So let's take one of those hundreds so that we're left with only two hundreds. So we're only left with two hundreds. And put that hundred we just took from that 3 and put it in the tens place. Well, 100 is the same thing as 100 is the same thing as 10 tens. So now we have 10 tens in the tens place, and now we can subtract. 10 minus 8 is 2. And then we go to the hundreds place, we have 2 minus 1, which is really 200 minus 100. So that is going to be 1. So our answer is 123. Now let me just do it again for you. Sometimes it seems more complicated when you do it with all of the exam with all of the talking. So let's just do it a little bit faster. We're going to be doing the exact same logic, 312 minus 189. Say, OK, 9 is greater than 2. We don't want to, that won't be easy to subtract. So let's get 2 a little bit bigger. Some people will call it regrouping, which is a little bit more technically accurate. Some people will call it borrowing. Let's borrow 1 from the tens place. So we borrowed 1, so that tens place loses that 1. The ones place gets it, and it becomes 12. And of course, we didn't borrow 1. We actually borrowed a 10. Or we actually regrouped a 10 is the best way to think about it. And so you have 12 minus 9 is 3. Go to the tens place. 0 minus 8 won't work. So let's borrow or regroup 1 from the hundreds place. So you take 1 from there. That becomes a 2. You regroup it into the tens place. That becomes a 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. Then you have 2 minus 1 is 1. Now I'm going to do it one last time, and hopefully this makes it a little bit clearer what's happening with all of this borrowing and regrouping. And I, it's super important to think about it this way, because when you're in the, the thick of a, a math problem, you sometimes forget, wait, do I borrow it from this first and then make that a 0, and then this becomes a 10? Or does this get does this borrow first? And you, lo you forget the mechanics very easily. And that's why it's very important for you to understand exactly what's happening. So to think about it, I guess, in a better way, is 312 is the same thing as 300 
plus, plus 10, plus 2. I just wrote out the places. 3 in the hundreds place is 300. 1 in the tens place is 10. 2 in the ones place is the same thing as 2. And from that, we are subtracting, some that we're subtracting 189. So we're really subtracting 100 minus 80 minus 9. We're subtracting 189. We're subtracting 180 and 9. And if you view it this way, I think it'll make it a little bit clearer of what all this regrouping business does. It's good to, to expand it out this way to, when you're learning the idea. But once you get it down, you probably don't want to use all of this real estate on your paper. And you could do it the way we did it starting out the video. But it's the exact same process, the exact same thought process. So you have 2 minus 9. You say, wait, I, I can't subtract 9 from 2. I'll have to go into negative numbers. And I don't know negative numbers yet. So how can I, how can I handle this? Well, I have a 10 sitting right over there. If I add this 10 to this 2, then I'll be able to subtract the 9. So let me regroup the 10. Let me take it from there. So now I have 0 in the 10's place. And let me add the 10 to the 2. So we have 10 plus 2 is equal to 12. So now I have 12 minus 9. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That's 3. And then I go to the 10's place. I have, look, I have 0 minus 80. How am I going to pull that off? Well, I got 300 sitting here. If I could just take 100 from it, then I'm going to have 100 over here. So let me do that. So if I take 100 from here, that 300 is going to become that 300 is going to become 200. And then I can put that 100 here in the tens place. And remember, this 100 is in the tens place now. So if I were to represent it, it the way I represented it in these problems is I said 10 tens. 10 tens is 100. 12 ones is 12. 2 hundreds is 200. So this and this and this, they're all the same number. 10 tens or 10 in the tens place is the same thing as 100. But what's good about this is we can now subtract. 100 minus 80 is 20. And then finally, we have 200 minus 100, which is 100. So we get 100 plus 20 plus 3, which is the same thing as 123.